At the start of acquisition, check the waste tank, which is located on the right hand side of the fluidic cart, that this tank is sufficiently empty for your run. Always empty the waste tank as it approaches 80% full. Disconnect the orange connectors and the level sensor line by pushing the metallic connector down and rotating it a quarter of a turn anti-clockwise. The level sensor line can be safely placed at the back of the fluidix cart. Keeping the lid on, the waste tank can now be removed and brought to the nearest biological work dedicated sink. Once the waste tank has been emptied, place it back on the fluidix cart and add two non-effervescent tablets of chlorine or a concentrated medical grade cleaning solution compliant with your risk assessment. To seal the waste tank, place the lid back on and rotate it clockwise. Reconnect the center line by pushing the metallic connector and rotating it clockwise. The orange waste fluidic line can be reconnected to any of the two orange female connectors found on the lid. The sheath fluid tank is located on the left hand side of the fluidic cart. At the start of acquisition, it is important to check that this tank is sufficiently filled to support the length of your acquisition. This can be done by lifting the tank up in order to sense the weight of the sheath left in the tank. To change the sheath fluid tank, first unscrew the cap connected to the sheath fluid line and fluid level probe sensor by rotating this cap anti-clockwise. Remove the excess of fluid from the probe and place it on the probe holder located on the left-hand side of the fluidic cart. Disable the alarm by pressing the alarm button found on the fluidic cart. Remove the fax flow container neck holder. Remove the empty sheath fluid tank. To connect the new sheath fluid tank, place the new fax flow container on the fluidix cart. Remove the cardboard cap, lift the container aperture and secure it with the container neck holder. Remove the security ring and unscrew the lid. Insert the probe into the container and screw it into the container. Note that the permanent red light indicating the sheath fluid tank is empty is still on. This indicates that the fluidic cart is on standby mode. The active pumping mode must be reset by pressing the restart button. Following the sheath fluid tank replacement, the fluidic cart might start pumping fluid towards the Fortessa. The pumping is characterized by a specific noise as well as an orange light on the pump fill indicator LED. To accelerate the pumping process, press on the prime button located under the pump fill indicator LED. The Fortessa main instrument power switch is located on the right hand side of the instrument. Once switched on, leave the Fortessa to warm up for at least 20 minutes. The control panel is located at the Fortessa front. The blue light in the power system window indicates that the Fortessa is on. By default, the Fortessa will be set on standby mode after being switched on. The run button allows you to acquire cell suspension or cleaning solutions through the sample injection port. The acquisition can be performed at three different speed levels, low, medium and high. The ranges of volumes acquired per minute for these three speeds are 6 to 24 microliters per minute in low, 17 to 70 microliters per minute in medium and 30 to 120 microliters per minute in high. The speed of acquisition can be fine-tuned using the sample fine adjust knob. Turning the knob anti-clockwise reduces the acquisition speed, while turning the knob clockwise increases the speed. You can perform up to 10 revolutions. The acquisition status video will show a green flickering light when the Fortessa detectors are triggered. The higher the number of triggers per second, the higher the green light signal will be. When the run button turns to an orange light, this indicates the acquisition cannot be performed. This might be linked to the arm supporting the sample tube being left on the side or to a clog affecting the Fortessa fluidic system. In case of a clog, priming the flow cell by the prime button is an excellent way to try and remove the clog as a first attempt. Once the priming is done, the Fortessa will automatically go back to the standby mode as shown by the amber light. Place the tube on the sample injection port or SIP 
by pushing firmly up. Remember to close the arm or the sample will be quickly vacuumed by the machine. To remove the sample, open the arm and remove the tube promptly. Once the computer is turned on and you've logged into Windows, start the BD Fax Diva software by double clicking the shortcut on the desktop. Log into the software. Please note that this video has been recorded with Diva version 9.0 and that some differences may exist between software versions. Diva will take a few seconds before connecting to the Fortessa. The connection is established once the acquisition dashboard window is active and the cytometer window gives the cytometer connected message. You can organize your Diva account by creating folders. Create a new experiment from the browser icon bar via a right click on your folder. When starting a brand new experiment, select the blank experiment option from the experiment template window. You can rename the experiment via a right click. A click on the cytometer settings tab will give you access to the Fortessa parameters inside the inspector window. From here, you can delete or add in parameters. Here we have FITC, PE, APC, Alexafloor 700, and APC Sci7. Add a specimen to your experiment as follows. This specimen can be renamed via a right click. Today we're working on a mouse tissue called spleen. This specimen already contains a tube that we can rename as well via a right click. To see our data, we must use the global worksheet. We then add plots inside the global worksheet via the icons found in the global worksheet toolbar. The dot plots come with a white background. It can be modified. For example, we will use a black background for this demonstration. We can now duplicate dot plots to get several of them. To help with your analysis, you can rename the parameters. So today we've got B220 FITC, CD3 PE, CD4 APC Alexa Floor 700, and CD8 APC Psi 7. By the acquisition dashboard, you can set up the number of events you would like to record for all of the events or for any specific gate you might have set up. You can also set an acquisition time limit. With the sample tube on the SIP, press the Acquire Data button. We can clearly see here in the forward and side scatter plot that our spleen lymphocyte population is off scale. In this case, it requires a reduction in the forward scatter voltage found in the parameter tab. Press refresh and populations of lymphocytes and myeloid cells are now clearly visible. The signal intensities for our phenotypic markers are within the detection scales. However, some of the negative events are crushed against the dot plus axis. So to enhance the detection of CD4 and CD8 phenotypic markers, we are now going to increase the voltage related to those parameters. Once the voltages have been set at relevant values, we can now record the data by pressing the record button located in the acquisition dashboard.
drawing gates around the events of interest allow us to focus our analysis on the leukocytes via the P1 gate. With a right click on a dot plot, we can show the population hierarchy, which will inform us about the gate parental relationships, as well as the respective percentages. We can assign new colors to the events belonging to those gates, as well as restrict the dot plot views to those specific events. Using the forward scatter height and forward scatter area dot plot, we can gate the singlets here in P2. By a right click, we can choose show population, which applies P1 and P2 to our plots. We can now add further gates as required for our analysis. You can change the color allocated to a specific gated subpopulation by right clicking on the related square and selecting the color of your choice. Here, by clicking P3, you can drill down to your subpopulation analysis on CD3 positive cells, splitting those cells based on their CD4 and CD8 expression profile. Right-clicking on the dot plot allows you to create a statistic view table. The statistic view table is useful to monitor the median fluorescent intensities and the quality of your compensation matrix. To access the median fluorescent intensity values, right click on the statistics view table Click on the statistics tab and deselect mean and select the median. We will now set up an automated compensation matrix calculation. Right click on the experiment folder, go on to compensation setup and create compensation controls. The create compensation controls table appears. You can tell Diva if you have an unstained sample or not by the tick box located on the top left corner. In this example, we're not using one. Diva creates a compensation control specimen for each single stain sample and unstained sample we're planning to run. Diva also automatically switches from global worksheet page to a normal worksheet page that is dedicated to the compensation control specimens. By default, Diva will record 5,000 events for the single stains. While this number of events is sufficient when using compensation beads, it might not suit every single staining made on biological samples. Here, we will record 10,000 events. The recording stopping gate is set on all events. This means that every event shown on the dot plot will contribute to the recorded event count. The P1 gate is randomly allocated by Diva on the forward and side scatter dot plot. Here, I will relocate the P1 gate onto my splenocyte population. By right clicking on the P1 gate, I can assign the same P1 gate to all my single stain samples. Each single stain can now be recorded. Most of the time, Diva automatically readjusts the P2 gate to the adequate positive peak. However, there may be some cases like here with this weak CD8A APC size 7 where you will have to manually readjust the P2 gate location. Once all the P2 gates are properly allocated, right click on the experiment folder, go to compensation setup tab, and press Calculate Compensation. The single stain setup table will appear. Choose the Link and Save option. 
The applied compensation values won't be seen in the cytometer settings compensation tab. You won't get any compensation from the samples you acquired before calculating the compensation matrix either. However, any newly created tube will be associated with the new compensation matrix applied. We can now record once again our fully stained sample and this time with a compensation matrix applied. We need to leave the normal worksheet and return to the global worksheet before recording our sample. Now recording the sample with the compensation matrix, we can see the CD4 positive population is CD8 negative in contrast to the uncompensated sample. The median fluorescent intensity values in the statistics view table can be used to control for the quality of compensation values applied by comparing the double negative events, MFI, with the single positive events. It is a good idea to back up your data and experiment templates frequently and transfer those backups in line with your institutional data management policy. Right click on the experiment folder to export your data as FCS files, preferably the latest version, which is here 3.1. You can save your experiment as an experiment template and this will record your experiment design, including voltages, gating strategy, and the sample names, but without the data. The experiment template files are small in size and allow you to free a significant amount of space in the DIVA software. Place the experiment template in the appropriate type folder via the export experiment sample wizard. To recall a previously saved experiment template, right click on your yellow folder Click on New Experiment, reach for the appropriate tab and select the template you are interested in. You now have a new template based experiment that you can rename. Should you wish to back up your data under the Diva software format, right click on your experiments, choose Export on the drop down menu and select Experiment. Saving the data under this format gives you the same advantages of the experiment template while preserving the data you have required. To quit the Diva software, select File, Quit. Using the instrument fluidic control panel, press run and set the flow rate to high. Install a tube containing 3 mL of BD Fax Clean on the sample port and ensure the tube support arm is left to the side. Let the instrument aspirate the solution for one minute. Move the tube support arm under the tube and allow the instrument to aspirate the solution for five minutes. Repeat the same procedure using the BD Fax Rinse solution or BD detergent solution with the support arm left to the side for one minute followed by five minutes with the support arm underneath. Repeat the same procedure using deionized water with the tube support arm left to the side for one minute followed by five minutes with the support arm underneath. Using the instrument fluid control panel, press standby. If you were the last user of the day, the Fortessa can be switched off by the main power switch located on the right hand side of the instrument.